What's going on everybody? It's Gone Turbo here. This is Skyrim Special Edition on the Xbox One. It is January 2021. Happy New Year everybody. I hope you are all doing well and thank you for checking out this video. In today's video I wanted to share with you my updated load order. You're going to see screenshots and video clips of what my load order looks like and these clips and screenshots are taken directly from my Xbox. I screen capture um, and uh, video capture right through the Xbox and uh, so what you're seeing is what my load order looks like. If you've seen any of my other videos you know that I aim to create the best looking game possible uh, graphically, weather and lighting, um, any overhauls that improve graphics that improve, that improve the look of the game overall. If you've seen any of my videos also you'll know that my load order doesn't change dramatically every time I post a new, a new load order video, but rather I test practically any mod that comes out that, that changes the, the look of the game uh, to see if it's something that I think is better than I previously have had. So uh, I have added a couple of new mods to my load order and wanted to share them with you today in this video. So again, overall, I try to change as much as I can and still have a good operating game. Um, I do use the Dropbox load order template and uh, even though that particular template hasn't been updated in a long time, I still use the the outline of categories on where mods should go. Another popular template is Tarshana's load order template. I've never used that one but some people said they've had success with it. Um, another thing that I also wanted to note is that uh, aside from the load order template that I use, um, I do try my best to follow the mod author recommendation. So there might be a couple of different things that aren't exact to the, uh, to the Dropbox load order. So I'm going to go through some of the mods. I'm not going to talk about every single one, but I am going to share uh, some of the new ones and some of the ones that might be a little bit more prominent in my load order. Um, some of you have had success with my load order. Some of you have had have not had success with the load order um, so do what you can I guess <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna again I'm gonna go th down through the load order and just highlight a couple of what the new ones are and just a couple of major ones that change the look of the game if you're new to this so I do have at the top of the load order the unofficial Skyrim patch that is something that I have always had in the, in the load order haven't had to seem haven't seemed to had have, have have had any problems uh, using that that patch so that works out just fine um, there's only a couple that are not highlighted and I'll talk about that in a moment but beards of power is a new one I did a video on that not too long ago so check that one out uh, these next couple of mods change the some of the uh, looks in some of the cities um, you'll see links to these mods in the pinned comment in the uh, down in the uh, comment section um, the sound mods that I use are Reverb and Ambient Overhaul and Immersive Sounds Compendium, so definitely check those out. You'll see that I, I use Frostfall, but I don't have it active just uh, for creating videos. It can cause some issues with the way the game looks. Um, in this section here, some mods that just change some of the uh, interiors um, of Breeze Home and some of the places in Whiterun. Um, in this section, I'd put some mods that might change some of those kinds of housing kinds of things and then get into foliage mods so this is an important piece here uh, I don't have any big significant grass overhauls but what I do use are unique grasses so these two here they both do something each different uh, are is, is is what I use um, I like them very much and they're they're lightweight uh, I do use dense grass, so it does densen up the grass and foliage in the game. And uh, another important mod that I would say would be very key to the way your game looks is this darker distant LOD. Uh, that helps make the coloring of the background a little bit more similar to the, the foreground and midground. I have some game changing types of mods here, some immersive kinds of, of mods. Again, nothing that improves graphics or lighting, um, but just some mods that change the game in terms of gameplay. A big one here, though, that I do use is Nordic Snow. So uh, I love Nordic Snow. I think it's the best snow mod that exists out there. 
A couple of other graphical changes mods in this area. Sigils of Skyrim, definitely an awesome mod that changes the banners in the game. Uh, I think the best one that exists out there. Um, some blood texture mods coming up. Definitely improves the look of blood. Um, and adds, in this particular case, a little bit more gore. <laughs> which, uh, you know, can never be too bad. Um, display enhancements. I've talked about this one a lot. In my particular load order, I increase contrast and increase saturation. Disable eye adaptation and bloom. I enable eye adaptation and disable bloom. That's an important one there as well. A couple of sound mods here in this section. A couple of mods that change. Um, a couple of, well, the cheat mods here. Uh, the font overhaul in this section here. Then get into some character changes. I don't have any significant female or male overhauls, but I do use female texture tweak texture tweaks. Uh, I think it's a fantastic looking mod for the female characters and very lightweight. Uh, Fashions of the Fourth Era, that is an important mod in my opinion in this load order. Um, players have different clothes throughout the day. It, they change up their clothes. I think it's just fantastic. Um, weapons mods increases the number of weapons in the game. Of course, I love my Isilmarils Lord of the Rings weapons mod. <laughs> I use Old Kingdom overhaul for weapons. But for clothing and armors, I use var variations. Uh, these mods more darken the color of clothing and armor and textures than it does change the textures, but it looks fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. In terms of lighting, I have lanterns and candles. Oh, actually, was this the one I'm yeah. No, uh, interior lighting and effects adjusts the interiors. And Tamriel Master Lights adjusts the exteriors. So um, some of you have asked me about that, and uh, those are the ones that I use. And I I think they are independent because one's more outdoors and one's more indoors when it comes to the, the lamps, the lighting sources in the game. And um, uh, it just seems to be different on the inside and, and, and outside. Some other gameplay mods here, um, things that I use around horses and, and food and... Um, animal behavior and then I get into more random kinds of small mods that don't really have a place that I can find in any category and seem to work fine kind of in this miscellaneous section so gosh, I have everything from milking cows and goats to um, things that just change loot that you might find oblivion HUD um, heads-up display the icons and where your things are on your HUD are different um, a couple of visual mods around enhance enhancements. Uh, what else? A dot crosshair, um, animated clutter. Rustic weather presets is important. I use the harsh setting on that preset right there. I know I'm talking fast here, but I'm just scrolling down the load order as we go. Uh, so again, a couple other just gameplay mods um, that just make some small tweaks to things that I like to see in in the game I do you have this the uh, XP 32 skeleton replacer more for the ragdoll effect because I don't do much with armors and body meshes and things like that now this section here I don't know what what's up but the uh, the icons never seem to to render but we get into more significant graphic overhauls. I'm still using Graphics Pack. Um, so I have Graphics Pack, Assets 1, Assets 2, the Static Mesh uh, Pack after that, the add-on for Landscapes in Dungeons, then High Poly Project. I use Lush Trees, which is also a Graphics Pack add-on. And this Hits Silverware Worthy mod, um, White Run Stone Walls, Skyland Towns and Villages, Lush Autumn Aspens. That's a new one that you'll see in this video. Um, the Better Dynamic Snow is kind of like the No Snow Under Roof mod. Um, for lighting, Rustic Weathers and Lighting, I use True Storms. And then after that, I use the Desmera uh, Compatibility Patch. Um, smooth Sky Mesh, this Arctic Moon mod, which is just pretty cool. Um, Obliv uh, Obsidian Mountain Fog is key. 
I'm trying this Cathedral Night Sky. Actually looks really nice. Um, Realistic Waters 2 Special Edition. And then we get at the bottom of the load order. So very similar to previous load orders. If some of you are like, oh man, I gotta do this all over again. You don't. <laughs> if you're building from my last load orders, you just need to uh, look at some of the new ones that I've added and, and uh, plug them in there. Um, but I just, I, I wanted to also note that uh, I'm still, you know, when it comes to using that rustic weathers and, and true storms, um, there are two, there are two patches that uh, are for rustic weathers and true storms. And I use the one that keeps the rustic weathers look, but changes the um, snow and uh, rain textures. Uh, which is the true storm piece of it also had some interior sounds and things like that so overall um, I'm very pleased with this load order throughout the years that this game has been released in special edition and we're able to mod for Xbox I have tested so many graphic mods that have come out and lighting mods all the weather mods that have come out I've tried them um, if I felt they were somewhat worthy of a look I've made videos on them um, but I've pretty much left no stone unturned or no leaf looked under whatever <laughs> the case might be for that and uh you know some might say that you know the graphics pack is getting kind of old and and there are better ones out there but for my just for my personal aesthetic um i i have liked what graphics pack covers because it covers so many things in the game um and uh it's it's consistent um and it looks good. It's detailed in 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 most cases. Um, but I also wanted to mention too that the the landscapes and dungeon pieces are based off of individual mods that I was once using. They were rustic lands, and um, the the dungeons, the quote unquote dungeons interior uh, mods that covers caves and dungeons and and mines and uh, all kinds of things like that. Um, so that's all wrapped up into one one pack. The a couple other things that uh, you know to note um, uh, that that silverware mod that is below graphics pack. Um, I didn't find something that that any of these uh, packs seem to touch when it comes to the silverware, and um, that one seemed to do a nice job for for that piece of it. For the items such as you see here, food and and. Um, um, you know, vegetables and 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 movable items. I just always felt that Graphics Pack did a nice job improving the look of of all of these things. It's just just because so many things are covered, uh, furniture and 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 rugs and and chairs and tables and wood grain. Um, the one thing that I I was never a fan of is the the way White Run looked with Graphics Pack. So that's why I have the White Run stone walls. Um, and the sky skyland towns and villages i like the way that 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 looks um to make farmhouses and 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 those kinds of buildings buildings look so uh that's why i have those um overriding some of the graphics pack pieces and i just like the way those look um the other thing too is that as i've tested and tried some other mods uh you know the the file size is important um i have about 200 megabytes left in this in this load order and uh, uh, leaves room for other things to kind of play with um, so that's that's a little bit about that a lot of you have been using this load order and have commented that you crash in white run or you crash going into dragon's reach and uh, I don't know the specific cause for that I don't seem to have that problem. Um, I'm playing on the original Xbox One, not an S, not an X. Um, I don't know if that has anything to do with it. I'd suggest though, if you like the look of this game and but are having problems in uh, places that crash, I'd suggest removing like, you know, or maybe immersive citizens or um, any of these other kind of gameplay mods. I'd say just take those out. Um, and just stick with the graphics changes. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe for Whiterun specifically, um, I, it is pretty intense. I have the uh, Gardens of Whiterun mod that you could take out if you're having more problems in 
in white run. Um, but other than that, I'm, I'm not sure what to tell you about why why people are specifically crashing in going into Dragon's Reach. Uh, I'm not really sure about that. So anyway, I hope you have enjoyed my new video, uh, like the look of my game, and really, more importantly, are healthy and well, um, and that you have a wonderful new year. Um, I continue, I plan to continue to uh, keep you updated on um, any mods that come out that I think are great or ones that I just want to try and highlight and uh, we'll see what the new year brings. Um, maybe I'll have some other games on here on my channel that I can uh, uh, play, play and share and um, not just stick to just Skyrim because there's so much out there that I do play and, and enjoy when it comes to gaming. So anyway, thank you for watching everybody. This has been Gone Turbo. I'll talk to you again soon.